Hello, everyone. We're getting started a little bit early today. We have, oh, there it is, 12 o'clock exactly. I'll wait a little bit longer for some people to join us, maybe a minute or two. <coughs> we're live on YouTube, we're live on Facebook. We're live on LinkedIn. We're happy to see you guys join us on all three of these platforms. That's so great. Hope everyone's having a great day so far. We'll get started in just a moment. If you have any questions, send them in right now. All right, I'll get started. And hello and welcome everyone. We're back again. Today we have a new episode of The Real Learning Quest, a series of live events to guide you in your real estate career. I'm Matt as always, and I have one special guest with me today, Callum Angus. Callum is a sales representative and has a passion for real estate. Thank you so much for being with me today, Callum. Thanks for having me, Matt. Um, hello to everyone who's joining. Nice to meet you all virtually. <laughs> today, our episode title is Real Estate, a Career for Everyone. I will get started with some questions we have received prior to the session, but please do leave questions in the comments or question section if you have any. We will get to those if we have the time for them. So Callum, starting us off, um, what are some pros and cons of joining a team versus being alone in the real estate industry? Yeah, so um, when I first started out, I actually did join a team. Um, I was probably with them for just under a year. Um, the, the pros and cons in short um and it really depends on where you're at in 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 your sort of real estate journey but for me personally starting out in in a team um it was great because you obviously was able to rely and lean on um your team members for support um the one thing i noticed very quickly is that um no two deals are the same um so um, whether you're buying or selling and you're responsible for your clients and either end of the deal um, there's always a lot of nuances to each deal. Um, so having the, the flexibility and, and the support that you get um, with having a, a team was great. Um, now, the cons to that, and, and again, it, it might not be perceived as a con to some, but to others it may be. Um, typically, um, how, how your commission is then split up Um there is no uh, right or wrong way or a black and white way of how that's positioned. But um, from my standpoint, um, my commission was split up um, slightly differently just because I was new to the team. Um, and then also um, having, having the experience of working in the team and then looking back in hindsight, um, going into it on your own and, and jumping in with two, your own two feet is there's something to be said for that as well. There's no other way to explain it. So uh, I would say um, the further you get down, I, I have colleagues that are in teams right now and they're very well-established realtors um, and, and they love the flexibility of having a, a support uh, mechanism with the team members if they've got family or they're going away. Um, the one thing you'll notice very quickly when you're in real estate is um you are really at the mercy of your client's schedule. And, and again, you obviously as a realtor can have the flexibility and choose how much you want to um, work and versus not. But um, you do notice very quickly that your schedules do um, get pretty packed quickly. And it's always around times um, that are not sort of conventional. So having a team member or a group of um, you know, team members that are able to help you throughout the year um, that would be the one thing I would say 
it is a real benefit to have. Yeah, so <clears throat> when it comes down to it, it really just sounds like preference. You know, maybe some people would prefer to be on a team, some would prefer to be alone. It really is just, you know. Yeah, and, and the one thing I've noticed, Matt, that I would sort of relay to the, uh, the folks on the call is there is no black and white uh, structure to a team. Um, there are many different nuances. So um, it's definitely something I would say um, explore. Um, you'll see the different mechanisms that teams offer and stuff like that. But um, also some of the things that you would expect to get from a team, you typically get that with your brokerage. So I, I wouldn't say it's, a, it's an absolute must or a necessity. Um, a lot of the support mechanisms that are out there do come from your brokerage itself. Um, so it's more of a personal preference. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for answering that, Colin. Our next question, would one be able to sell real estate and financial services simultaneously? Um, so theoretically, I, I would say yes. I don't, I don't think there's any rules around it. Um, typically, as a realtor, I mean, I don't have that capability of doing that, but I do have team members or do have contacts and peers in the industry that are able to do that. And I'm aware of people that do position that. So look, it, it would be another feather in your cap um, to be able to speak to that. And I think if you're offering financial services, and, and again, financial services covers a whole breadth of, of, of services, uh, whether it be mortgages, whether it be sort of personal um, sort of finance services, so depending on what exactly it is, there would probably need to be something to be looked into that. Um, but I know of people that have the capability and capacity to do that. So um, it would be beneficial. I just think it from a from a legality standpoint, it might be one of those things you just want to run by your brokerage uh, and make sure that there's no um, there's no areas of concern from their perspective. And, and the further you get into it, I'm imagining like, there'd be some sort of crossovers that you'd have to be aware of. So, but in short, yes, I, I think you, you can. And I think it would be something that would be beneficial as it's another service that you're able to offer your clients. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Colin. And I have a live question here for you. Um, what is the difference between sales representative and real estate and a realtor in Ontario? Is it a different exam or course or you know, timeline. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So in Go short, on. no, there is an, it, there's certain language and titles that I as a sales representative or a realtor will want of the same thing. It, it's, it's a title that you have to adhere to um, that just tries to be as transparent um, to the consumer um, as possible, really. So there are, there are certain titles that um, we have to um, go by. Um, and I think it's just to, um, create clarity within our industry um, and it has been really well received because there was some ambiguity around it um, a few years back and I think having the clarity around our titles ha has actually benefited even though that might sound uh, redundant but it was something that has definitely been a, a positive in the industry to move away from some of the ambiguous um, titles that we had um, but in short there is no difference it's just a preference of title well cool. thank you perfect thank you for clarifying that um, the next question I have for you what are the steps from start to finish for starting a real estate career um, you know go into as much detail as you want you know talk about the different pro the different steps in the process whatever you yeah do. yeah so I would imagine there's probably people on on this webinar that are at all different stages so um let's speak to the nuts and bolts of what you need to do to qualify and to pass so you have the courses that um the college is setting up um you have to go through them um in sort of chronological order and i, I think uh, correct if i'm wrong here matt but um there's a number of different links and stuff on the website that really speaks to that um that we can Absolutely. speak to um so going through that and then kind of as you get to the latter stages of um, your exams, um, once you become a registered realtor or sales representative, um, 
you do need to go through a couple of steps um, where you have to register um, with RICO um, and going about doing that. There are a number of different ways of doing that. Um, typically, um, there's no sort of law or right or wrong around it, but a lot of the brokerages that you would be meeting with to sort of see if it's a right fit for you, they would also be able to provide some assistance around that. Um, again, the level of assistance might be um, one or the other. We're not entirely sure, but from my perspective, my brokerage was able to assist in that. Um, now, once you're registered, then essentially you are free to begin your real estate career. Um, there are a number of different stages to go that I can kind of elaborate on that would I say from becoming registered to then getting your first deal and your first clients and all things like that. Now, there's no black black or white or wrong or right or wrong answer to how you go about that phase. Um, I think we do have a couple of questions in the later um, that would speak to kind of those steps. But the only thing I can really speak to is my personal experience. As I mentioned, I was started with a team. Um, so I was registered with a brokerage. Um, and in that team, um, we would essentially work together with the group of listings. There was two real realtors in, in that team that had a lot of experience. So um, me as a new agent, I would really try to immerse myself around them I would do a lot of open houses um, on listings that weren't mine, um, but as part of the team, I was able to have have the ability to go and do those open houses. And from there, you're really you're, you're in meeting with prospective buyers. Um, again, most people is probably on this call has been in an open house in some form, whether it be personally or just to go and look. Um, so getting that experience of being on the other side of the table and uh, a meeting with prospective buyers, um, understanding what they're looking for. Um, you're, you're essentially getting your name out there. And the benefit of being in an open house is it might not be your listing, but as a, as a prospective buyer that's come into it, um, they might not be that too familiar with it. So um, I actually, my second um, transaction I had actually began through meeting with somebody in an open house. So that for me was a really good way of sort of getting my name out there and, and getting people to see what I'm all about as a realtor. Um, but yeah, again, from those steps that I've mentioned already um, through to getting into real estate, that there are a number of different avenues and ways, and I'm happy to elaborate on them. If any of you have any questions on that for me to elaborate on. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the, the breakdown. And I just want to remind everyone, this all starts with, you know, the program that Humber College, uh, the Humber uh, Real Estate Salesperson Program, it all starts there. And through that program, these courses and exams will teach you what you need to know. And it will um, begin your real estate uh, career. And you'll register with RICO and um, you'll go into the post registration phase. So if you have any questions about that, or don't, if you want to know more about it, you know, just visit our website, humber.ca slash real estate. And that'll um, help clarify a lot of questions. I'm sure a lot of you have. So Callum, next for you, the next question. Um, when in the process of your real estate studies, did you start interviewing brokerages? Um, if I recall, I think I, got through four or five of the, the courses. Um, and just to elaborate on what you said there, Matt, I think the big thing is when you do the real estate courses that are provided by Humber College, you, you do really get a, a well-rounded knowledge of, of that really does prepare you to go into um, real estate. So I think after the fourth or fifth course, it, it really, and the way the courses are structured, you, you start to understand the importance of brokerages and, and, and kind of the role that they play in the real estate process. So that was really where I thought, OK, you know what, it's now time for me to personally go and start looking at brokerages. So I, I interviewed a couple um, and got a good feeling from the one that I ended up joining. And um, and that was that was done before I'd finished all of my courses. So it, it's something I would recommend now, typically most people would probably have uh, friends or family or somebody that they know in the industry. And I would say really lean on them as well and get some 
information and, and guidance of how they approached it. Um, but in short, there's no, there's no, you can never go and interview with a brokerage too soon. I think just getting out there and getting a sense of the different brokerages and their, their offerings um, is beneficial. So um, yeah, definitely go and start um, having some conversations once you know that's the path you want to take. Thank you. Hope you guys are all taking notes. Colin's great here telling you guys everything you need to know. And going off of someone someone else's uh, live question, um, you know, do you recommend doing real estate, you know, maybe when you have other commitments going on, you know, like schooling or another job, you know, uh, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, it's a tough question because look, um, I have to say naively before going into real estate, I didn't realize the magnitude of, of, of what it entails. But again, you're, you're dealing with massive assets of people's home, like home people's homes are typically their largest financial asset um it really depends on the person look i know everyone's very busy and the courses are there is a lot to take in however i think humber do a real good job of providing a, a lot of flexibility of how you want to tackle that and the timing around completing the courses is ample um my personal situation I actually I took pretty much all of the time because I was working I had a young family and um in, in during my courses we actually had our first child so everyone's got a lot of personal things going on everyone's got uh, other jobs and occupations they need to manage and uh, typically if you're doing this in conjunction um however I would say the flexibility that Humber College do provide um really does allow you to um complete these courses in your own pace um and you do have plenty of time and and again from my personal standpoint once i was doing the the courses i did find them incredibly interesting so it, it wasn't a chore per se for lack of a better word it was it was really beneficial to me and i think it's something you can absolutely manage and do in conjunction with personal and other uh, other job like commitments that you might have yeah, it definitely depends on the person and what you're capable sure. of. But, um, you know, just I always I like to say this as much as possible. You know, you can really do anything that you really want to if you put the effort and time and energy in, into it. Yeah. So just remember that. Um, and I have another live question that is a little similar. Um, someone says. When someone wants to join real estate from a regular nine to five job, what should be the strategy uh, since it's a sales career? Um, and, you know, maybe you don't have any initial sales in the first three to six months. How can one survive? What do you have to say about that? Uh, again, it really does depend on the person. Like I had a number of people in my classes that we kind of joined together. And that's the one thing. There is no clear path to, to real estate. My personal um, story, for lack of a better word, I... Um, it took me a good six months to get my first transaction under my belt. Um, so, of course, I did need to be able to manage finances, family, all of that. Um, it wasn't something I personally was able to jump into with two feet. I, I did give myself a bit of a phased approach. Um, but within a year, I was full time and um, it was it was very busy. And I think that that's the one Thing, looking back in hindsight, um, always prepare for multiple exit strategies. If you are going into this with a, a full-time job or a part-time job um, that would help sort of pay the bills and you want to sort of get into real estate with a career, um, I did notice once it gets busy, it, it does come around very quickly. And um, having a having the flexibility or the opportunity to be able to move into it full time. Uh, to me personally, it's not, it's not a um, career that I think I could do together with another profession. Um, however, I did start out doing um, two jobs for lack of a better word. So it, I would say, give yourself the opportunity to be able to move into um, real estate as a career, like full time. Um, but again, understanding that it is something that, 
you do need a bit of a long run up on. Um, but there are many of my colleagues, they jumped straight into it and um, they got their first sales at different stages to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We love to hear your experience and thank you for sharing your your personal experiences that you've gone through. And, you know, remember everything is, everyone, you know, goes through a different timeline. Everything is different for everyone, but um, so that's something to keep in mind. Another question for you, Callum, as a new starter, what is some advice you can give to new professionals in a market where the big players are already there? Yeah, um, it's a great question. It really is. I mean, it was it was a genuine concern of mine. Um, but I think the biggest thing I can sort of say is there are so many people looking for homes and there's just it's a great career to be in. And of course, there are going to be the established realtors. Um, but the established realtors, they only have a certain amount of capacity that they can they can work. So from my perspective, I think the biggest advice I can give anyone that's just starting out would be to really immerse yourself in the industry. So um, if we look at now today, um, open houses, being in the office on a day to day basis, working around having a mentor, um, getting your finger on the pulse with the market. I mean, we all, most people probably live or rent or own a house that we all know an area that we work in. Um, you can never be too prepared um, when people are coming by. And, and as a new realtor, being prepared um, on, on some of the homes that you might be in as an open house and the area and, and being able to speak to that um, you'll notice very quickly that you're, you, you'll put yourself in good stead, even against some of the more established realtors that may or may not have enough time to um, follow up with buyers and um, open house leads and things like that. Um, that would be the one thing I would sort of really say is really just immerse yourself, get in front of people, get as much experience as you can in open houses or uh, doing private showings uh, and just prepare yourself as best as possible because um, you're always going to be thrown a curveball and there'll always be something that happens in the industry or, or with, with a transaction that um, it, you're not too familiar with. And, and again, having the experience and um, the knowledge or, or the capability of leaning on somebody, whether it be your brokerage or a mentor that you're in your brokerage, um, that would probably be my biggest advice for you guys. Yeah. Thank you, Callum. And um... It really is just, um, you know, that hard work and that determination can really get you somewhere. Um, you know, even if there are bigger players in the field, um, you know, find your niche and market yourself and really find a way to get your name out there and people yeah. will really fall in love with you and your personality. For sure. And if I may, Matt, another thing I did personally is I really focused on my, where I currently live. Um, I lived in the area, the subdivision, a, a, a matter of just, um, reaching out to neighbors and letting them know about what's recently sold or what might be coming up. And, and before you know it, you become that local expert in your area um, and, and knowing your area um, better than one of the more established players that might not be working in your area um, really does set yourself apart. And I think um, just providing people with knowledge and, and, and good information um, that's a great way to separate yourselves from the pack. Yeah, yeah. And I think good guidance is a good good one too, you know, just patience and guidance and, you know, help with anything that, um, uh, you know, someone that you're helping might need. So I think that would be something to point on there too. Um, another question for you, would you suggest working within a brokerage prior to being fully registered? as a real estate agent. Um, yeah so um there are certain nuances and certain rules and regulations that you'd ha have to adhere to um but going into an office in, in a meeting with a brokerage and and just getting some sort of work experience which they would be able to coordinate for um you, you wouldn't be able to do certain things until you're fully registered but being able to go into the office and and, and meet with um, your peers and, and just, again, begin to immerse yourself in, in the industry. Absolutely. I think it would be a great uh, way to sort of give yourself a head start. Yeah, for sure. Another live question, um, which is something we actually touched on last session when I was talking with Mary, but um, 
being in real estate, you really need to have a social presence like on Instagram, Facebook, you know, these platforms. Do brokerages help you to make your social media content if you are not that much, not that good? Um, at it, or? Yes, they do. And I think that's why it's really important that you do go and interview with um, with different brokerages, because while now, I mean, we're in a digital world, um, so 90 percent of the brokerages are offering some level of social media support, whether it be templates, um, whether it be somebody on staff that can help you with that. Um, but again, that really depends on your personal comfort with social media, how much you think it's important to your personal business. Um, that is a prime example of why meeting with different brokerages, because what you might find important, whether it be social media, because you, you, you don't have the capabilities to do it as, as well as you would think you'd need to do, um, that might be a deal breaker or make or break for you to go to a, a certain brokerage over another one. So um, that's just one example. Now, there are a whole raft of other critical areas of real estate and, and what's important to you. So um, different brokerages are offering different things. It's not necessarily around um, your re remuneration or things like that. It, it's all about the, the wraparound support services that they offer you, which in turn becomes part of your business that you're offering to your clients. Yeah. And, you know, I, like I said, we talked about this last session with Mary. I talked about it with her last session, but I mean, social media is, you know, the new thing, the new way to go. And um, it's really important to market yourself on social media platforms like Facebook and, and Instagram. And, you know, you can really get your name out there and really, um, you know, build a brand for yourself and really start something big on these social platforms. It's really um, important. And it's, it's, it's great because it's all free and you can just, you know, start from nothing and build yourself and build your way up and, you know, tell your friends, tell your family, you know, get the, get the word out there. For sure. Absolutely. It's definitely something I see. I mean, it's, I do have a social media presence. It's something I wouldn't say I'm as good as other people are in the industry. Um, but there are a number of people in the industry that have started out um, that are very young or very new to the industry and they're doing great because they have a real prevalent social media following and they're able to leverage that and, and, and really get their name out there. Yep. Yep. Okay. And uh, to, to finish this all off, you know, I, I would like to really bring home the question. Someone asks, someone has asked us, you know, can I start this program any time of the year? The answer is yes, you can start whenever you want and it's all online and you can find out so much more information on our website, humber.ca slash real estate. And, um, you know, there's an FAQ page on there. There's so many different tabs, you know, looking at all these different little sections, find out so much information on there. Um, really want to bring that home. It's, it's a fully online program um, and you can start it whenever you want. Your, your deadline will um, uh, end, you know, based off after when you start it. And um, yeah, so you don't have to wait for fall. You don't have to wait for spring. You can start it right now if you'd like. You can start it in two months. You can start it in 10 months. You can start it whenever you're ready. And I really, um, like I said, I really uh, encourage you to uh, visit humber.ca slash real estate. And um, Callum, if you have anything else you'd like to say, um, go for it. Oh. Um, but thanks for joining guys. Um, feel free to reach out on social media. If you do have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I'm based out of London, Ontario. Um, appreciate you all your time and, um, good luck in, in your quest of becoming a realtor, I guess. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining today. Um, make sure you keep up with us on our platforms, uh, like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, and our new YouTube channel. Uh, to stay informed on when we have our next events coming up, like another real learning quest session like this, and our virtual career conversations event that Callum will be a part of. Um, that's happening on September 12th. So um, sign up for that, register for that, and we'll see you then. Additionally, you can reach us at 416-675-5025, or you can email us at realestateinquiry at humber.ca. As always, we did answer as many questions as we could, but please join us again for more questions to answer next time. And like I said, join us for that Career Conversations event. That's a longer session. That's an hour long rather than 30 minutes. And 
um, you'll find out so much more information about real estate. We'll have three other um, uh, experts there with us, and uh, you know, as well as Callum. So um, we really hope to see you there. Uh, make sure you sign up for that. So thank you again and uh, for joining us. And Callum, thank you for joining me today. Really no appreciate problem. it. Thank you. And hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.